Okay, I'll call a meeting to order the Municipal Planning Commission on Thursday, June 30th, or 28th, what it is, the date here. And I'm in the minutes from the last one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, do we have any uh, additions to the agenda? Nothing? No. Okay, and can I get an adoption of the agenda? Shelley? Seconder? Uh, Tony, I think Tony put his hand up. There. Oh, Tony put his hand up, okay. And all those in favor? Okay. Uh, minutes from the previous meeting of June 16th. Do we have any revisions or? Remember to use your microphone. I will move the minutes from the last meeting. Thank you. Seconder? Anyone to second? Kirk. 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 Okay. And all in favor? Thank you. So the first item is uh, summary of development permits for information only. I'll move uh, acceptance uh, for information purposes. <clears throat> all in favor? Development permit, uh, item 661, uh, regarding the freestanding sign. We can get someone to make a motion to start discussion. So. We, just, we, uh, we can introduce it first, and then we have okay. a motion after that. So, okay. So. It's ready to go. There we go. Okay, so we have an application first up for a freestanding, um, illum sorry, uh, electronic sign uh, at the St. Anthony's School. This application is for um, like the TV screen style signage. So it's very similar to the one at DBSS on both sides of a freestanding structure um, to be placed in an area that I determined to be within the roadway. However, when I circulated to Alberta Transportation, they didn't have any concerns with it being technically on the, the road land. Um, and is St. Anthony's school area. Um, freestanding signage is a discretionary use within the neighborhood district, which is what the school is considered. Um, that being said, the maximum height for freestanding signs is to be six meters, whereas the applicant has brought this forward at six meters and 10 centimeters. So it's a little over, but that is, uh, 20 feet, which is why it is slightly above the, the six meters in the land use bylaw. Um, like I said, this was circulated to Alberta Transportation and uh, they had no concerns with the sign being placed there, providing that the signage was able to be, the lighting settings were able to be dimmed um, and providing that the transition times between screens was for, as per their, their regulations. Um, this was circulated to the adjacent neighbors up to 500, well, sorry, not adjacent, so neighbors up to 500 meters away, uh, which included a number of properties to the west uh, and some businesses to the south of the, of the school there. One letter was returned, um, from a, an adjacent business in concerns to the distraction that it may have to drivers along the highway. Um, and I forwarded back the comments from Alberta Transportation in regards to, to that. Um, there was a another representative of a commercial lot that, that came forward. However, they weren't, weren't concerned with the information presented uh, at the time of, of me giving that information. They just had a couple more questions. Um, I, I have had a bit of experience with an LED sign in the last community we were at. Uh, they mounted one on the end of the senior center 
and we had to send someone around to teach them how to dim it down because you couldn't drive by it at night, especially if they had it mostly like just a bit of lettering on a blank background. It's horrific. <laughs> but as they say, it's dimmed at night, right? Well, yes. Are they dimming it at night? Do they did they put that in their application? Uh, they didn't, but I put that as a as a condition. proposed condition. Yeah. So I guess part of that would be a, is the uh, making sure that that's actually what they're putting in for a sign. Because I think the one thing, and we've talked about this several times, is the sign that's at DVSS uh, <clears throat> could direct air traffic quite easily at night. Right? It's super bright, and uh, I would think it's really a problem it's a problem in the winter time especially when it's so dark early but um i think this being right adjacent to a highway would you want to insist that this has an automatic dimming like not even something that someone has to manually do but yeah um, that, that would be a so as soon as it detects that there's low light it yeah dims out. So, so i guess that would be a question back to the applicant or not just as part of the and I'm not sure if that's a condition. Do you put that as a condition? Because if they say, well, we had no plans to do that, um, then I think we would say, well, we don't, you may not you may not want to approve it. I think you, So I'm not sure if you want to know that information beforehand or if you want to make it, uh, approval contingent upon you having the flexibility to say, hey, if this isn't dimmable and you won't make it dimmable, then we won't approve it. Just throwing it out there. I see Kirk's got a question there. Go for it. Uh, yeah, like I'm actually, I, I haven't seen any letters on this because I live right across from it, like uh, at the end of the football field across. Uh, so it'll, it, this will be right in my front window pretty much. So um, I don't know if I have to be recused from this vote or not. So because I, I haven't, I didn't see any letter come to my house or any feedback. So I just wanted to point that out there but I just I probably have to rec recuse myself from this one uh you're welcome to um I it, there's a chance that you I I'm unsure why you didn't get a letter I recall your names being on the the mailing list so I apologize okay. that yeah, that didn't no, I didn't I didn't see anything <laughs> and I checked my mail weekly so okay yeah thanks Kirk and Kurt, you wouldn't have to recuse yourself of, of this because okay. you don't have a uh, anything financially to gain from it. I think you just you it's about trying to make a uh, response based on what you what your role is within MPC is and not and not just on a personal bias. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like the only concern you guys have already brought up with the dimming at, at night, and other than, other than that, that's all I would okay. have. Tony? Yeah, I kind of like to echo the same there. My concerns are pretty much the same as Alberta transportation with respect to it being dimmable. Uh, like you say, Daryl, the one at uh, DVSS is unbearable. I don't know if we made that condition or not, but it is, it is bright. I, I haven't specifically heard any complaints. I don't know if your department has, but... <clears throat> Uh, the condition, I think, has to be uh, day-night timers on it, where you have can vary the brightness, and it that dimming can be controlled by timers, right? So that would definitely be a condition. I think I think that's part of Danis's concern too. The the letter that we received later as to the impact. Um, <clears throat> he also says distracted driving. I don't see it as distracted driving in legal terms, and I don't believe Alberta transportation lays it out that way either, but I'm thinking dimmable might be the basis of his concern, because if you go to page 13 of the uh, of the, the bylaw there, 4.1.11 and 4.116 um, speaks to that, I believe. And it also speaks to the maximum height, which Antonio has already identified. So would we be approving that with a variance? 
I, I think what we would say, you know, so it's interesting when we look at meters exactly and, and realize that the world actually still works in feet, um, you know, so 20 feet is essentially six meters, except of course they put 6.096, right? With, we've usually allowed uh, about a four to six inch variance without even note, just to say that. Um, so I think it would, okay. uh, it, it's noted, sorry, it's noted in the uh, uh, report, but I think from our standpoint, it's, it's to be considered equal uh, between the two numbers. Okay, but I think absolutely then, making develop, making it dimmable, making dimmable through automatic means mandatory. I think is uh, is a requirement for sure. Yeah, I think that's a specific one. And then I think his letter also speaks that it may not obstruct the view in four point one point one one. And I and you can interpret this here for me because it's uh, confused with an official traffic sign signal, which is what he he speaks to or device or otherwise pose a potential hazard to traffic. So again, I'm thinking the dimmable may resolve that. Yeah, I believe that'll probably cover it. I know the other part on the Alberta transportation letter talk to screen refreshment. They don't like it too fast or too abrupt. Uh, they like a, a sort of a slow transition and then on there long enough that people aren't, you know, going nuts. Um, so again, again, our proposed condition will deal with that? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, okay. the proposed the condition should, should speak to that. Yeah. And, the, and my, my last concern was the uh, Antonio identified as the road allowance. I couldn't really tell from the drawings, but it is definitely in the road allowance. So that's what I determined from our mapping system. However, when I spoke to Alberta Transportation, they said that they didn't consider that to be within their road allowance. So I have that email from, from their planning technician or technologist stating that they don't consider it to be their land. Okay. They don't consider it, but it is mapped as their land? Yes. And I guess that's the basis of my question. It says, it says, uh, in 4.117, it may not be erected without specific approval of Alberta Transportation. Yep. And his letter doesn't really indicate specific authorization. So I'd hate to see him put it up and then have to move it later. Yep, I agree. So it either is or it isn't a right away. And if it is, then he needs to give written approval for them to put it there, does he not? I would think that uh, the letter stating that they don't consider it to be part of the right away would absolve them of the requirement to provide a letter. Like uh, it, it's stated that it's not their concern and that'll, that should be enough for anyone to come back on if they decide later they want it moved. They can, if it is illegal, if it is illegal right away, our bylaw says it needs written approval. I just, I just like some clarity around that. Either it is or it isn't. Because it'd be easier to move the sign now than later. Yeah, I can get confirmation from Alberta Transportation. Once should, approved, yeah. like I, I yeah. do have wording uh, that states in this case, you're not required to apply for Alberta transportation for a permit, like in writing from AT, but I can, I can get secondary clarification on that. Yeah. Cause I, I think his existing letter doesn't really speak to that. Okay. If it is a legal roadway. No more comments. Okay, and for the motion 6-2, proposed motion on the mobile vendor? No? Not, oh, oh, right, right, right. Forgot where I was. Um, can I get a motion 
for the uh, development permit for T00055-22D. Sure. If you could read it, please. If you could read it, please. Read. For the record, yeah. Yikes. I haven't been here in a while. <clears throat> the, the, the Planning Commission approved and grant the permit T00055-22D submitted by D. Lund for a freestanding sign at the 1000 North Dinosaur Trail, northeast of 10, 29, 20, west of 4, subject to the conditions as presented. And the conditions, yeah, there we are. And all in favor? Passed. Yeah, we are going to make the height change from the first what did to absolutely livable by. Yeah, 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 yeah. Automatic. Yeah. automatic, automatic, yeah. Okay. And do we have any discussion on the next proposed motion? Assuming that we can speak to it. We can discuss. Yeah. yeah. Eric, did you want to step forward? Uh, so I have Eric Newman here from Red Deer River Adventures. Eric, I don't think we introduced the microphone system for if you wish to speak. There is a button on the right hand side. If you press it, it'll turn your microphone red and then you're welcome to speak. This is being uh, recorded, broadcast on YouTube, um, and we have members here on Zoom as well. So this is a mobile vendor permit for Red Deer River Adventures uh, to have a trailer placed um, at Newcastle Beach and at some time on the Rotary Splash Park. That's yeah, so primarily at the Newcastle Beach location, like you mentioned, and then when opportunity arises with our e-bikes uh, around at the Rotary Splash Park. Okay. So when we had discussed previously, you, I believe you had requested um, for this to be placed permanently on location number two at Newcastle Beach. Um, it is within the, the bylaw that states that it does need to be removed every evening. Um, so I just wanted to raise that again to yourself. Um, but like other mobile vending permits, this is a requirement to come to the Municipal Planning Commission, which is why we're here today. Um, you had also written on your application to go to the Hoodoos. However, there are the three um, CCAN permanent mobile vendors at the Hoodoo location. So, so that would not be authorized, unfortunately, if this got approved. Yeah. That's it. So do we have any other discussion or I get a motion to... Can I get a motion then? Shall I? Can you read it out, please? Yeah. <laughs> too many things. Um, development permit T00056 22D MB. Um, the, the Municipal Planning Commission approves development permit application um, T0056 22D. MV submitted by Eric Newman for a mobile vendor, Red Deer River Adventures, located at Newcastle Beach and Rotary Spray Park, subject to conditions as presented. All those in favor? And Palliser Region Municipal Services. Thank you. Devin, do you have anything? Hi, everyone. Nope, I don't have any applications today. Um, I was going to let everyone know, though, that Palliser actually recently hired a new senior planner, um, Tracy Watanko. So uh, she's not able to make it today, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to bring her next time to introduce to everyone. Great, thanks, Devin. 
Yes, if that's it. Okay. Any other discussion items? Can we have a chair for the next session? Yeah. Elected. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we can do a motion for that. <laughs> can I get a motion? Go ahead. Can I make a motion? With your mic on. Jeez. <laughs> I'll make a motion that Andrew takes over to be the chair for Municipal Planning Commission for the next few months. Next three meetings. Three meetings. Thank you. Three months. <laughs> Two and a half months. <laughs> uh, can I Month second that personally? Yeah. All in favor? Wonderful. So, so call. Uh, the next meeting date is July 14th. Correct date this time? Yes, I believe so. Good. <laughs> and uh, motion to adjourn. Shall we all let her? Okay. And we're out of here.